Hello everybody, welcome to Diego Knows. My name is Diego and I'm here to talk about Sex and the City. Yes, it's Sex and the City time, okay? I'm Diego, I've watched every single episode of Sex and the City. I watched both movies and I watched that piece of shit show in Just Like Crap, which is a piece of shit. I re-reviewed it if you want to watch this on this channel. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Sex and the City and I promised you a long time ago that I was going to go through every single episode of Sex and the City and that's what I intend to do. Every single episode, Sex and the City, alright? Now, what I do different here uh, from other YouTubers, okay, is when I talk about Sex and the City, I'm going to talk about it from a straight man's point of view. Okay, I was a big fan of the show, but as far as I knew back at that time when the show first came out, I was the only straight guy I knew that was watching the show on a regular basis, okay? Uh, so, uh, I had my own little unique perspective on the show that a lot of other people didn't have. You know, uh, the show was written by gay guys, uh, lesbians, and, and angry feminists. Okay, so my voice, the straight man's voice, was not put into the creation of this show. We had no representation on this show, not really. Okay, we had straight guy characters on the show, but they were not real characters. And that was my biggest problem with the show. I didn't like the way the straight men were being represented on the show. Okay, I didn't like it at all. Okay, they're all two-dimensional or one-dimensional. They're all cartoon characters. They didn't act really like... The way a normal human being would act, much less a straight guy would act. Okay, that's the only problem I had with the show. Otherwise, the show was was pretty funny. You know, it was it was groundbreaking at the time. Uh, very well acted, and there's some very well acted scenes here. Uh, a well written show for the most part, other than what I just said. You know, but I didn't like the way the straight guy was being pr uh, portrayed on the show. Now, back then when the show first came out, uh, these episodes that we're talking about in this season was in the year 2000, okay? So back then I was much younger, and I was dating just like these women were. I was younger than them, of course. Uh, but I was dating, I was actively dating, you know? So I lived in a big city, I lived in Chicago, I worked downtown, you know? Um, I was very involved in the nightlife, you know, the museums, uh, the art galleries, the nightclubs, the bars, you know? Uh, the shows, you know, all that kind of stuff. I was very involved in that, okay? So I knew where to go, uh, you know, th that kind of thing, you know? And this show has a lot of that culture, that New York culture in there, okay? Well, I lived in a big city at the time, and I was actively dating, you know? So, you know, I, I kind of knew, uh, familiar with that whole idea about the hotels, the nightclubs, you know, the, the big posh parties. I was involved in that scene myself in Chicago, you know? Uh, the theater district, all that kind of stuff, you know? So I knew a lot of actors, I knew a lot of models and stuff. Like, we all hung out together and stuff, you know? Um, so I was very active in that whole scene, okay? So this show, to me, was kind of a representation of what I was already going through. But from an older woman's point of view, okay? So anyway, so I enjoyed the show. Like I said, I was actively involved doing that at the time. I look back on it now, and I'm like, oh, shit, man, we were stupid back then, you know? Uh, and this was a long time ago. This was before 9-11. This is a year before 9-11 happened. So it was the whole world was a whole different place back then. Okay, uh, so like I said, I was a big fan of the show, and I watched every episode, and then now, right now, I'm going to finish my review for season three. Okay, this is episode 18 of season three. The name of this episode is called cock a doodle Do. Yeah, cock a doodle Do. all right? Uh, so, um, just, just give you a fair warning here. I'm giving you a straight man's point of view. I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, okay? If you're easily offended, if you're easily triggered, okay, get the fuck out, okay? You're not going to like this show. You're not going to like my review, okay? I'm going to tell you the honest God truth. I'm going to tell you what your boyfriends don't tell you, what your husbands don't tell you, what your dads don't tell you, okay? Because they don't want to hurt your feelings, okay? I'm going to tell you the honest God truth from a straight man's point of view, okay? If they get it wrong, I'm going to fucking call it out. If they don't get, if they get it right, I'm going to call that out too, okay? So it's not one-sided, okay? Sometimes they get the show pretty, pretty damn accurate, you know? And when they do, I will tell you, okay? All right, so moving right along. To start off with, like I said, this is a, a season three, episode 18. Any cockle do is the name of the episode. So it starts off with a, um, a rooster uh, is, is cocking. Yeah, okay, at, at the crack of dawn. But it's, they're in downtown Manhattan, okay? Uh, so it wakes up Care. What the fuck's a rooster doing crocking here in downtown Manhattan? So she wakes up, and there's like a whole cage full of uh, roosters. Uh, on the roof of her neighbor's roof, okay? Which, is, which we find out is a veterinary, it's a veterinary clinic, all right? So it's keeping her awake. Meanwhile, Samantha is trying to get sleep in her loft, okay, in the warehouse district, okay, and there's these uh, trannies, yes, trannies, which today, they're called transsexuals today, but back then we called them, you know, well, sorry, they're called transgenders today, back then we called them transsexuals, or trannies for short, and uh, there's these three black trannies out there that are hooking, yeah, yeah, hooking in New York, okay, I guess uh, Samantha decided to get her by her place, like right in front of where all the black trainee hookers uh, pick up their johns. Yeah. So they, she hears them out there being loud, you know, propositioning men, you know, just talking shit out loud. She gets pissed off, raises her window, tells them to shut the fuck up, you know, that kind of thing. You know, and, uh, you know, she, well, she doesn't say that, but she hears what they're saying. She says that later. Uh, she hears what they're saying and, and they're, they're yelling at each other. They're talking about like, that guy, I told him you better get that fucking dick out of my ass before I shit on it. <laughs> you know, 
Yeah. Hey, let me tell you something, Kay. In Chicago, where I'm from, if you've ever been to Chicago, then you know that that neighborhood north of Wrigley Field, they call it Boys Town, okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't go there. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of that shit there. Oh, my God. All right, moving right along. But I've seen him. Okay. So, anyway, of course, she tells the other girls about it at lunch. Because all four girls always talk shit about what's going on in their lives. So, at lunch, she says that her neighborhood went from trendy uh, during the day to tranny at night. Okay. And she says, hey, I got nothing against pseudo straight men from New Jersey trying to, you know, trying to pick up hookers, you know. But uh, I don't want to be awake at night, you know, that kind of thing. Chicks with dicks, the other white meat, you know, pseudo straight married men who have to get uh, laid, uh, but do they have to do it in my or in my block, you know, in front of my block? Now, this is Charlotte's first breakfast that she's had uh, with the girls since she separated from her husband. She left her husband last episode. Okay, her limp dick husband who can't get a hard on doesn't want to do anything about it. Uh, she threatened that that you know that she would like fuck another guy, and he said he was okay with it. You know, that they can stay together but lead separate lives. And that's when she realized, yes, she needs to leave Trey. So she, she already moved back into her old apartment. And uh, she's going to have, like, a moving back in party with the girls. But she feels kind of weird sitting with the girls on Sunday because she's, like, you know, she's separated now. And she's, she was only married for three months, and now she's separated, you know. So she feels kind of weird about that, and rightfully so. Charlotte says, like, the only thing worse than uh, 34 and single is 34 and divorced, you know. And Miranda, of course, says, yeah, well, you know, 34 and trapped in a, in, a, in a bad marriage is worse. You know, now now Miranda's got a point there, but Miranda's a downer. You know, she's not going to see the good in anything. You know, she, um, you know, if her friend gets happy, she's hoping her friend gets divorced because she wants her friend to be as miserable as she is. She wants all her friends to be as miserable as she is because she's a fucking miserable piece of shit person. Miranda is. Yes, she is. All right. And Charlotte's just like, ah, I'm tired of hearing about Trey. Let's just not talk about Trey. I don't want to hear about him anymore. And his fucking lip dick. You know, <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> and of course, you know, Samantha's like a uh, hard being the, the, the word here, you know, and Miranda's like, you know, we're going to have Sunday night. We'll have an unpacking party. So that's what they do. They have an unpacking party for Charlotte. Meanwhile, Carrie goes to the veterinarian to complain about the fucking roosters that are keeping her up in the morning. And she finds out that they're fucking, they, they were rescued from some illegal cockfighting or some shit. Now she feels bad because she told them that they can to, to move the roosters down to the basement so it doesn't wake her up in the morning. But now she's like, oh, no, I let them stay up there. It's fine. They had a hard life, you know, whatever. I don't know where they're going with this. Uh, meanwhile, Miranda has a uh, spoiled Chinese. She checks her fridge. She's got spoiled Chinese food. So she calls up, you know. To fucking her order her Chinese food like she does every day. And every day she orders the same fucking thing. Her fucking, um, her, uh, teriyaki chow mein and noodles or shit, whatever. And she calls it up. And, of course, the girl, the Asian girl on the other end of the phone, she recognizes her voice. She already knows her address. She already knows what Miranda's about to order, you know. You know, she already knows that she's ordering for one. <laughs> and then she starts giggling about it like, oh, yes, I know. You always order the same thing by yourself. <laughs> and Miranda's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you, you're making fun of me? Because I don't have a life? Because I eat the same shit every fucking day? Eat by myself every fucking day? <laughs> See, there's little moments like this that I like, you know? I, I like this stuff. Okay, so um, anyway, um, so she orders the takeout. Now, uh, meanwhile, uh, Miranda and Carrie, they go for a walk. And they walk and talk like they always fucking do. And that's exactly what Miranda's bitching about. It's how she called up the Chinese place and the Chinese place already knew what she was ordering because she orders the same fucking thing every night, you know? Uh, and they already know her voice. They already know what she's going to have. They already know her. They know what time she's going to call. They know, they know everything about her. So she's kind of pissed off that she let herself get into a rut, that she has no life, that she's not doing anything but ordering fucking the same fucking Chinese food every fucking day, you know, because she's got no one to go out with. She's got nothing else to do. You know, except fucking sit at home and watch TV and eat the same fucking food every day. You know, so she feels like she's in a rut, you know. And and it bothers her, you know. And I get we've all been there. We've all we've all had the, the non-dating phases, you know. You know, and uh, you know, she's ordering the same food every night. Mm, tap to my fridge. You know, she said, the only thing uh, more pathetic than this would be to have a Kathy comic taped to my fridge. <laughs> and Carrie said, don't ever mention Kathy comics in front of me again. 
Okay, now I I think I know what a Kathy comic is. I think it's that that lady. Is it that lady that thought that's like the, the secretary that she's always typing or some shit with a fucking sad look on her face and the long brown hair? Is that what a Kathy comic is? I think that's what it is, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that looks like a miserable existence. Okay, now here's the thing. While they're walking down the street in New York in the afternoon, they run into Steve and Aiden. Yes, their ex-boyfriends are fucking having beers together outdoors, you know, like in the patio. And they run and they're like, oh! And they fucking they run and go hide. You know, oh my god, what are they doing here? How do they know each other? How do they become friends? You know, what are they talking about? Are they talking about us? You know that kind of thing because it's, it's automatically about them. You know, so they run and they hide. He goes like, what are we gonna do? He goes like, well, we're either gonna walk out there, you know, and see them, or we're moving in here in this building that we're hiding in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, to make it fair, uh, Steve is there walking his dog, the dog that he bought with Miranda when it was a puppy, and Aiden's there with his dog, Pete. That's that's his dog. It's the dog he's had the whole time. He was dating Carrie. So, uh, like I said, Miranda and Carrie shit themselves when they see them. Okay, what are they doing here? They're friends now, you know? Are, are they talking about, like, we're these two bitches that ruin their lives, that kind of thing, you know? Oh my god, that's probably what they're talking about, how we ruin their fucking lives. Like, we're just these two bitches that ruin their lives, ah! You know? You know, making it about themselves. So they finally decided to tough it out, go grow a pair of nuts and go out there and start walking in front of the, the patio table. And they do. And of course, Steve and, and Aiden see them like, oh, hey, look who's here. You know, that kind of thing. Look who it is. You know, so it's Steve's like, you know, this is why I love street traffic. You know, this is why I love street traffic here. You know, and of course, Miranda notices the, do the dog who's not a puppy anymore. Oh, my God. He got so big. He's like, yeah, he starts college next year. <laughs> you know. <laughs> two beers, okay. Uh, Carrie notices that there's four beers on the table, but only two guys. So she, so Carrie says, oh, you just got two beers. Oh, my God. Did we drive you to drink? You know? Did we give you guys a drinking problem? <laughs> and then Aiden's like, uh, they're, they're not all ours. And then we see these two fucking hot girls come out of the bathroom and walk over to Steve and Aiden's table and sit next to Steve and Aiden. Two hot young girls, okay? Now, they're a little thin for my taste, okay? A little thin, for, but other than that, they're beautiful. I mean, these, these girls are obviously models. These aren't actresses. These are models. They got some fucking models in New York. Hey, you want to be in an episode of Sex in the City? But they're like, oh, yeah, okay, you know? While they're searching for their fucking millionaire sugar daddy boyfriend. Uh, so they said, yes, let's be in it. So they beat it, and that's how they got him, okay? And yeah, these girls are really pretty. They're really pretty, okay? Uh, the blonde one, uh, I guess her name is... Um, Jessica and the brunette one, the one sitting with Aiden, her name is Susan, okay? So Jessica sits there in front of Steve, and she puts her hand on Steve's hand, and she says, hey, honey, uh, do you still want to go to the movie, or do you just want to hang out at home? Miranda sees this, and the look on Miranda's face is just priceless. I mean, she's, she's the look on her face is just like, you know, like, you know, like, she totally fucked up. Like, she had a fucking desirable man that wanted her and she fucking let it go she blew it away because she wanted something better remember you know she just fucking kicked him to the curb and uh he's a bartender okay in downtown man and of course he's gonna get laid i bartended in downtown chicago okay it's very easy to meet women okay it's not difficult at all all right <laughs> when women get drunk they lose their inhibitions okay <laughs> Yes, the, why do you think people become bartenders? The same reason people become drug dealers, to get laid! See, when you're a bartender, which is legal, and when you're a drug dealer, which is not legal, guess what? You control the fun. You control, and when the girls get hungry, you control the fun, you see? When I bartend, I control the fun. I got the liquor here, you don't. You know, see what I mean? That's how it works. Quid pro quo, right? So anyway, so yeah, so I knew I knew Steve was gonna get laid. I knew he would find a girl pretty easily, you know. Like, like, like if he worked like if he was like an insurance salesman or something, I would have felt bad for him. But come on, he's a fucking bartender in downtown New York. All right, he's gonna get laid. All right. So uh, so that's going on there. 
And of course, you know, the girls are jealous and they, they say their quick goodbyes to, to the guys and they bump in. They're so nervous. They're trying to hide it. They bump into each other when they're trying to walk away and they realize they're both going the wrong direction. So they, one of them does a U-turn, uh, Miranda does a U-turn to walk the direction they're supposed to go, you know, and it's just so obvious that they, they were, they didn't see that coming. They didn't expect to run into their ex-boyfriends there, much less to see their ex-boyfriends with two girls that are hotter than they are, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that must fucking suck. It, it sure, it sure as fuck must, okay? But I don't really feel sorry for them. I really don't, okay? Ladies, you'd be surprised, okay, when guys trade up, okay? It happens both ways. I know a lot of you girls out there, when you dump a guy, you dump it because you already found someone else better, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, just because you found someone else doesn't mean that we're not going to find someone else better either, okay? <laughs> Trust me, I know. Trust me, I know how you girls are, okay? Not all you girls, but a lot of you girls, okay? You know, like if I post a picture of me with a new girlfriend... You know, on Facebook, you know, I hadn't heard from you in forever, but now you see this picture of me with her, and now it's looking, you're fucking DMing me, asking me how I'm doing, asking me what I've been up to all this time, you know, do I ever still think about you, all that kind of bullshit, you girls do it, you fucking know you do it, alright, so don't give me any of that bullshit, okay, I know it's true, okay, I know it's true, you girls keep coming after us once you find us with someone better looking than you, yeah, I know how it is, stand about me, alright, so here we go, so, like I said, Miranda's visibly jealous. Aiden doesn't say anything. Carrie says, good to see you again. Bye. And they leave. All right? And they're in the wrong directions. Okay? Now, they go to Charlotte's place, and they're helping her uh, to unpack. And Carrie's like, yep, it's official. They're over us. They are over us. They don't give a shit about us anymore. They have new, cute girlfriends. And Miranda's like, I don't get it. I I'm still in the I just broke up phase. You've been in the I just broke up phase your whole fucking life, Miranda. Charlotte's like, it's not fair. Women obsess over everything about what went wrong. And men are just like, alrighty then. And then they move on. It's not fair to us, we're women. You want to know why, Charlotte? You want to know why, you know, women obsess over what went wrong and men just move on? Okay? Uh, because we fucking have to! Okay? Now, it's a big problem right now. Okay? But a lot of guys out there, they're growing up with single moms. They're growing up watching these fucking chick flicks and being told to be romantic, be nice, be faithful, be honest. You know? Be all these fucking Prince Charming fucking things, right? And then when they become that and they still get fucked over, you, that can only happen so many times before you're going to finally say, fuck it. Fuck it. I cannot in invest so much of my emotional energy into this bullshit scam. Because it, it hurts too much. It costs too much. It's chipping away at my soul every time I try to be a, a good person for somebody and they treat me like shit. Okay, so what do you do? You got to desensitize yourself to it. You got to say, okay, I'm not going to fucking give as much as shit anymore. Because it costs too much to give a shit. I'm going to give a shit to people that have earned it. I'm not just going to give it to them. You see what I mean? So if you were already at the part where the girl's going to dump the guy, you know, he, she's never really had all of him yet. So he can afford to lose her. He can afford to move on. Because he wasn't that emotionally invested to begin with. He was working his way there. He never got there. He never got to the point where it's really, really going to fucking hurt yet. You see what I mean? That's how men are. We, we're that way so that we can survive. You don't want to know why we're that way? So we don't have fucking house parties so we don't cry to each other fucking about it. That's why. So we'll spend a whole fucking TV show crying about our ex-girlfriends. That's why we don't do it. And of course, Samantha takes offense to what, what uh, Charlotte said. She says, like, you know, not all women sit around and obsess about men. I move on. Which is what I just said. Move on. Okay, now, just to be fair, not all men are like this, okay? Um, most men are actually like, like, like you girls. Believe it or not, it's sad. But, but we are, you know? The single moms out there, you know, I know they're doing their best, you know? But, I mean, 
You know, when you don't have a real father figure, and I don't mean baby's daddy, I don't mean fucking, you know, mom's boyfriend, I don't mean any of that shit, or their stepdad, who already brought his two kids into the marriage that he cares more about than yours. I'm talking about, like, having a father figure around, you know? They're supposed to teach you this stuff, okay? We don't really have that. Kids are being raised by fucking TV shows, by movies, you know, uh, by, by, you know, pop music lyrics, you know? And they're watching what their friends are doing, okay? And, uh, and they're thinking, like, this is what I need to do. This is what women say makes them happy. It's the only thing that's acceptable. Anything else is rape or sexual assault, you know? Like, you have to talk to a girl and get on a knee and ask her out to the prom. Because if you look at her, you know, if you give her the, the, male, the, the male gaze, then she's going to file sexual assault charges on you. Because it looked like you were fantasizing about her, you know? And she feels violated. So, uh, so we've got to play such PC culture here that no guy's going to fucking make a move anymore. No guy wants to talk. No guy wants to be rejected. You see? So you do have guys that don't know how to fucking be men because no one ever taught them how to be men. They're basically taught to be women, women with penises. I mean that literally and I mean that figuratively, you know? There's a lack of father figure around, you know? Everyone's afraid to be a man, except unless you're trans. If you're a trans man, that's okay. You know, that, that's a good thing. Okay, but if, you're, if you actually have a penis and you want to act like a man, that's a bad thing. You see? You gotta act more like a woman. Even though genders don't fucking exist, they're just social constructs. You still have to act like a woman. And women still have to act like a man. You see what I mean? It's fucking bullshit. But this is the confusing, if it's confusing for us, we're fucking adults. How do you think these fucking kids feel today? Okay? Yes, they are overly emotional. Yes, they're crybabies. Yes, it's all about their feelings. You know? Because they were raised that way. They didn't know any better. No one ever taught them better. No one was allowed to teach them better. Okay, so yes, I wish I could say that guys just get over it, okay, but this show is dated. This episode is 22 years old, okay? Most guys are going to lead with their feelings now, and it's fucking sad. It is so fucking sad, and you women out there know what I'm talking about. You've dated these guys. You know what I'm talking about, all right? Shit. It's sad. It really is. The next Sex in the City reboot is going to be the guys all crying about their ex-girlfriends. Yeah. And it's going to be praised for being progressive. All right, moving right along. Carrie says, I don't obsess. And Miranda's like, bull fucking shit. What about big? You're always obsessing about big. And, and she's like, oh, well, well that, that's because that was big. Big was tricky. I still don't know what happened there. Samantha's like, you know, you look back so much, Carrie, that you should, you, you should have a relationship with a, with a rear view mirror. Miranda's like, uh, you know what? Objects in the rearview mirror appear closer than they are, Carrie. All right. So Miranda's like, you know, um, Carrie's like, well, Aiden was very clear what happened. Okay, I hurt him. So he moved on. Brand's like, it's always easier for men to move on. All they have to do is sit there and wait for some fucking hot Jessica to come along and sit on their lap. It's so fucking easy for them. Then Samantha's like, uh, men never think anything is their fault. Uh, yet every episode you're blaming men for everything. You know? You say that we never, we never blame ourselves for anything, but every fucking episode women are blaming us for everything. So how can you say that we never take responsibility for anything that we do, but yet here you are, when everything happens to you, you blame us for it? Wow. Kind of ironic, huh? That both those sentences would be said right after each other. Okay, Miranda, you fucking bitch. No, no, we don't get to just sit out there and some hot Jessica fucking sits on our lap. I mean, that happens if it's a fucking chick show and we're actors and we're playing out a scene that will happen, yes. Okay, but in real life, it doesn't really fucking happen, okay? Unless you're one of those guys with a super high sexual market value, you know, like Big or like, or like a movie star or a rock star or some shit like that, someone who's famous, you know, someone who's, you know, who owns their own company, you know, someone that a hot girl is just going to automatically recognize when she sees them walking down the street. You know, unless you're one of those guys, which most of us are not. Unless you're one of those guys, no. No fucking hot girl is going to stare in your guy's fucking lap. 
just show up just because you're sitting there. That's not how it fucking works, okay? That's how it works for women. If a woman is reasonably attractive, eventually some guy will go up to her and approach her and start flirting with her. That is realistic, but not for a guy. Okay, women are programmed to not make the first move unless it's a fucking, you know, a Jonas Brothers or a Harry Styles. Okay, and then fucking all 50 of you will make a first move at the same fucking time. All right? But unless you're somebody like that, no. Sitting there is not going to get you fucking laid. Nobody gives a shit about the guy who's just sitting there. Okay? Women give a shit about the guy that's sitting there that already has six girls trying to fucking hit on him at the same time. That's the guy the girl's going to run up to and hit on as well. Not the guy sitting there by himself. And most of us are the guys sitting there by themselves. We don't have that kind of sexual market value. We're not movie stars. We're not rock stars. We're not celebrities. We're not famous politicians. We're just ordinary fucking people that you never fucking look at. And then you fucking blame men for everything. Get the fuck out of here. Don't tell me about fuck. None of you fucking bitches on this show ever hit on a guy. Not really. You have conversation. You don't hit on them. Every girl in this fucking show gets hit on by the guy. That's the way it was intended to be. So don't fucking tell me we just fucking sit there and the girls come to us. That's not how it fucking works in real life. All right. Okay, so there, got that out. All right. Now, there's one thing I will say about Samantha, okay? Her statement about how men never blame themselves for anything. Hey, you know what? I will say this about Samantha. Okay, Samantha, I, I got to respect her the most, especially in this scene right here. Okay, because Samantha knows how to compartmentalize guys. She doesn't make men her whole life. Okay, men are not her whole life. She's not obsessed about men all the fucking time. Like Carrie does, like Miranda does, or like Charlotte does, okay? She puts men in a certain place in her psyche and they stay there. They don't, they're not allowed anywhere else in her psyche. You see what I mean? She compartmentalizes them. Now there's good and bad in this, okay? The bad part is that she's never going to have a meaningful relationship with anybody if she keeps doing this. No guy is ever going to fucking give a shit about her, okay? Men are just going to be disposable. They're there so she can get her nut and they're easily disposed of, okay? That's how she sees men, okay? She'll never let a man have power over her, you know? He can give her orgasms, but that's not power. That's just something she expects from a guy, okay? She doesn't expect anything else. She doesn't want anything else, okay? Now, you can go that way for a long time, especially if you're super good looking. But the older you get, the less attractive you get. You're going to find out there's going to be a lot more younger women right behind you that can do this thing better than you can, all right? And that's when you're going to start to get desperate. Like, oh my God, what have I done with my youth? I spent my entire youth fucking people, and I got nothing to show for it, you know? Except a bunch of notches on my fucking bed, bedpost, that's it, you know? I got no love, I got no relationships, I got no family, you know? So, uh, but I do respect the fact that Samantha has balls. She knows how to put men in a certain area. She doesn't pretend she doesn't need men, but she knows how to put them in an area so they don't dominate her, okay? That's actually a very good message, okay? I wish more men would do that. I really wish more men would do that, okay? Because women are not are not the reason men exist. It's not because of women and vice versa, okay? No man, if a guy is out there, if he was raised to think that his whole purpose in life is to find a woman and make him happy, he's fucking, he was lied to, okay? That's a message that we keep getting sent, but fucking, you got to wake up eventually. The real woke is you got to look at your own fucking worth and what you contribute to society and to yourself, and you got to put that first, okay? It's not about, life isn't about finding a woman to make you happy. Okay, it's about being happy and then finding a woman. You see what I mean? Samantha understands this. I think she went a little too far though. Like she should have found a guy and settled down by now, but she doesn't want to. So she can keep riding it, okay? Because you know, it, it, this, this show is fiction. It's not realistic. You're going to notice that all the guys so far, the past like four or five guys that, that Samantha's been fucking, uh, not all of them, but some of them have been no names. Like, like we've seen them. They're all male models. You know, who are chisel features, shredded, and fucking great bodies and shit, but they don't really say anything, they just fuck her, okay? A woman like that, like Samantha, is not going to pull guys like that, okay? But the show is expecting you just to go along with it. It's Samantha, okay? No, no, there's women better looking at Samantha that can't get guys like that, okay? So don't give me that fucking bullshit, all right? <laughs> Samantha doesn't have that kind of fucking game. She can get laid, okay? But if you got a guy like that, and you've got five women, 
And one of them is Samantha, I guarantee you, one of those other four women is better looking than Samantha. He's going to pick them, not her. Okay, but this show's going to make you think that Samantha's got powers. That she knows how to fucking snap her fingers and make the hottest guys in the world want to fuck her just like that. That's bullshit right there. I'm going to use the bullshit flag. I'm not saying she can't get laid. Okay, I'm saying the guys that she's laying right now, these fucking no-name male models, that's bullshit. Okay, if he's fucking her, he's fucking her for, for a reason. And it ain't her fucking looks. All right? more like uh, something else. All right. Yes, that is a straight man's point of view. Okay. So anyway, uh, um, uh, Carrie starts contemplating these issues that we've been talking about here. And she decides when she's writing her column, she's thinking like, you know, you know, um, what if everything isn't the man's fault? What if everything isn't the man's fault? Because Charlotte says, before she starts writing, Charlotte says, like, I wish there were no men. I wish men didn't exist. Because then we wouldn't get hurt. Bull fucking shit. You fucking bitches hurt each other a lot more than anything a guy's ever fucking done. Okay? You girls fucking are, are, are vicious to each other. Girl power my fucking ass. Once you both want something, you're going to fight over it. Don't give me that fucking bullshit girl power. You girls are vicious to each other. You know, I mean, just the fat shaming alone. I swear to God, I've seen women make fun of other women being fat a hell of a lot more than I've ever seen a guy make fun of a fat girl. A hell of a lot more. They don't tell me it's sisterhood. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you talk about you feminists, yes. They, 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 yeah, but you have no problem fucking a, a, a married man, though, right? Yeah, you're only a feminist when it's what you want, right? But when it's another woman getting hurt by your actions, you don't give a shit. Yeah, don't give me that shit. All right, anyway. Um, what if everything isn't a man's fault? What if it's us? Good question. I'm glad someone asked that question on the show. So Carrie asked the question, what if it's us? What if it's us, the girls? What if, what if this is all our fault, you know? And I don't think it's all women's fault. I, just, like, I don't think it's all men's fault. You know, that's why it bothers me when women say shit like it's all our fault. It's not all of our fault, okay? A lot of it's your fault, too. You know, don't blame it all on us. We're only one half of it. You know, uh, Samantha confronts the trannies outside. Uh, she goes out there and tells them basically, hey, listen, she gives them respect. She tells them, hey, listen, I understand, you know, that you got to look good and all that stuff, but I've got to look good too. You know, I need to get my sleep because I got to get up early and blah, blah. You know, these bags under my eyes aren't going to go away unless I get my eight hours, you know. So they give her respect. You know, they give them their names. I don't fucking remember their, their names. And she goes upstairs, right? They say they're going to move their, their business down, down the street, okay? And she gives them respect, you know, and they call her Miss Carol, you know? I'm like, what the fuck, man? All right, yeah, and it gets worse. Oh, yeah, it gets a lot worse. All right, so Big calls Carrie. Just out of the blue, he calls Carrie. Uh, he's like, you know, I was going to ask your question. I'm trying to paint my, re my room red, and I'm thinking that I just want one wall in my room to be red. And leave the rest of it alone. What do you think, Carrie? And she thinks it's fucking stupid. You know, um, I think it's the red. You know, she left, I uh, ended it. So he tells her that, uh, you know, that Natasha, what he really wanted to tell her was Natasha left me. And she's like, yeah, I heard. He's like, how did you find out? She's like, I just did. You know, and, and he's like, well, she left and I ended my marriage with her. And uh, can we have lunch? Because you know what that means. You know, can we have lunch? And Carrie's like, uh, okay, I'm nodding on the other end of the phone. Meanwhile, uh, Carrie and Miranda go shopping at some thrift store or something, whatever. And she tells Miranda that she's uh, meeting Big. And Miranda is like, uh, since when? Since when does he talk? You know, I'm meeting Big for lunch to talk. And Miranda's like, uh, since when does Big talk? You know what, Carrie? I'm not holding your hand through this shit again. And Carrie's like, uh, I'm not asking you to hold my anything. It's just lunch. And she's like, Miranda's like, wake up, Carrie. How many times does this guy have to hurt you? How many times do you have to go through this before you realize that he's bad for you? Every time you get near him, you turn into this pathetic, needy victim. And the worst part about it is that you're more than willing to keep coming back to him for more. Wow, Cynthia Nixon. That was a very well acted scene. And you know what? And she took the words right out of my mouth. You know? I mean, what the fuck, Carrie? You complain about not finding a guy. You fuck over a good guy. 
and, and, and the guy that cost you your last guy, you, you want to go back to him? What the fuck? This guy's no problem leaving his wife. Hey, what, what, you think he's going to fucking hold on to you just because he's horny? Let me tell you something, you fucking bitches. Guys, we lie about shit. We are gonna, if we, like I said, Big already understands Carrie. He knows how to push her buttons, okay? He knows, he already knows that Carrie's in love with him. He already knows that Carrie will do anything for him. He knows it already. He's gonna use it. He's gonna fucking use it. He doesn't care how many other guys she's dating because he knows that he owns her ass, that she's stuck to him. He knows it. He's gonna manipulate. He's gonna pretend that he gives a shit. He's gonna pretend that he misses her. He's going to pretend that she's special to him because he wants to fucking get laid. Because guys, with egocentric guys on a power trip, guys with a high sexual market value like Big are going to use this shit to get fucking laid because they like to manipulate and control people of the opposite sex. It's a form of power. Just like women who do this. It's a form of power. He knows he's got power over her, so he's going to use it. And Carrie's going to fall for her. You know why? Because he knows that she's weak. He knows that she's connected to him in a way that he's not connected to her. Because if he really didn't love her, he wouldn't do this to her. See what I mean? How do I know this? Straight man's point of view. All right. I'm going to end this video here because it's going to be a long one. Like I said, this is the season finale. This is the season finale. Okay. So I'm going to end this one here. And I will be back with part two to finish the review of season three, episode 18, cock a doodle doo All right, I thank you for watching this long and I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.